for giving this. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Super. You probably heard the really annoying message come through. Did you? <laughs> it, come, <laughs> it came through twice. Oh my gosh, I just realized it captured what I said. I'm sorry, teams. I didn't mean to insult you by saying you were really annoying. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? That it's actually transcribing everything I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to stop. Uh, so, <laughs> so thanks again for for setting this up, uh, Spiros. And um, as always, we really appreciate um, the partnership that we've been able to to forge with you and uh, with the university as a whole. Uh, so, by way of quick introduction, uh, my name is Mark Russo. I am a digital media account executive uh, here at Adobe. Um, that means that I, I'm responsible for Adobe's uh, digital content creation authoring tools, uh, the ones that you you know and love, uh, Creative Cloud, uh, Adobe Express, Adobe Sign, Adobe Stock, uh, which is really the, the focus of today's session. Uh, I'm based in Montreal. I've been with Adobe going on 20 years, uh, and I've, I think I've been focused on education almost exclusively for the last uh, 16 years or so. And so that that's a really a really um, you know important piece of my my life. Um, I, I'm the son of a faculty member at Concordia University here in Montreal. I uh, I'm a, a, a perpetual student myself. I. I, I've done uh, some undergrad um, degrees and, and some some graduate degrees, and uh, you know I, th I think this this aligns nicely to the conversation today. Uh, before I go on any further, I'd like to give my colleague Jim Babbage an opportunity to introduce himself, and then we'll uh, I'll probably give an overview of, of the agenda for today's session, and we'll get started. Thanks, Mark. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Jim Babbage. I'm a senior solutions consultant. Here at Adobe, I support um, my colleagues like Mark, as well as our customers, faculty and students uh, on best practices for using the Creative Cloud tools. Uh, my background is education as well. I was a teacher actually for 21 years at Centennial College in Humber College in Toronto, where I live. I taught in the new media, advertising and journalism programs there uh, using all these cool tools from Adobe. So I'm really excited to uh, spend some time today and talk to you about uh, career branding and about how our tools can help you kickstart that process or uh, enhance what you already have. So looking forward to it. Super, thanks, Jim. Spiros, is there anything you wanted to add before we get started? No, I mean, that's great. I just want to thank you both for making the time and uh, I'm very excited for the session and I'm sure our students as well here are very excited as well. So thank you everyone for making the time to be here. Let's get to it. Wonderful, thank you. So um, Jim and I were, were looking at a possible uh, flow for today's conversation. And we, we thought it would be best to start with Adobe Express. Uh, first, to expose you to what that is, because uh, it's a relatively new product um, in the Adobe world. Uh, and it's, it's an important one, because it is a, a product that has next to no learning curve. Um, and it allows you to, to complete projects and assignments very quickly and efficiently. Uh, and in many respects, it is the foundation for uh, eventually gravitating or graduating to uh, the Creative Cloud ecosystem, which is a um, an ecosystem of 47 uh, products and services, uh, many of which are industry standard solutions for digital content creation. Uh, everything from uh, image editing, photo editing, to video editing, uh, to audio editing, and and, uh, and then some mobile app prototyping. And I'll be showing an example of that uh, during this session, one that I used actually. So it's a, it's a personal example that's, uh, that's close to home. Um, so with that, I think what, what I'll do is pass the floor to Jim, um, Jim, if you wouldn't mind just giving an overview of Express, we'll start there. Sure. Uh, I'll share the example of Adobe XD and how I applied it in my uh, EMBA program uh, a yep. couple of years ago. Then we'll talk about Creative Cloud. We'll leave some time at the end for uh, questions and um, hopefully be able to, to impart in you and instill in you a better understanding of why these tools are relevant to enhance your uh, experience as students, but also to prepare you for the workforce upon graduation. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And you should be seeing a, a large uh, graphic here. Uh, this is actually something I was working on um, a week or so ago when I was talking to some students, well, some 500 students actually at Seneca College. And um, I wanted something that talked about the importance of career branding. And what I did was I actually used Adobe Express. Uh, to sort of jumpstart 
my uh, creative process and helped me to very quickly build out this really cool little graphic that to me spoke to the top five issues or five reasons why a career brand is so important and why as students, uh, whether you're in first year or graduating year, you want to start thinking about it as soon as possible. Um, and the examples are all here. The gig economy, whether we like it or not, is alive and well. Um, everybody has a side hustle. I've got a side hustle. We were just talking about a minute ago. Um, another part of my background is commercial photography. I do photography on the side. I have photo exhibits running on a regular basis. In fact, I just had an, an open house or uh, meet and greet uh, this Saturday up around Rice Lake near Peterborough. So I'm doing that kind of thing on the side, even though I've got a pretty amazing job right here at Adobe. Uh, other reasons for thinking about that career brand is remembering that social media is everywhere. You're all using it. So how can you utilize it uh, to promote your brand? and not just uh, the great time you had out with friends or the amazing dinner you took because you're a foodie, um, making sure that you're using that tool to help promote who you are as an individual, but also as a professional. Uh, something that's always worth keeping in mind is that we are in a global marketplace. If the last three years have taught us nothing, and I'm sure they've taught us many things, one of those things is that we can, in many cases, work from anywhere and work for anyone from anywhere. So you're not restricted to your region, to your province, to your country on the kind of work you do and who you do it for. Uh, so establishing that career brand uh, digitally online is really, really important as well. And then sort of tying in with that as well as that whole new normal. Again, a lot of that's uh, essentially been exacerbated by, by the pandemic. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff online we didn't normally do in the past, job interviews, uh, working online, working remotely. This is something that while may change, the dynamic may change, the balance may change over time. Um, I don't think it's going away personally. I can tell you right now, um, I'm a remote employee for Adobe. I have, I rarely set foot in an Adobe office. Uh, I've been working for Adobe for 13 years from a desk in my home, uh, traveling when, they, when needed, that's it. So these are the kinds of things to think about. And before we go too much further, I wanted to sort of bring up one other element here. I'm gonna try and minimize that little window. Oh, didn't wanna do that. Sorry, bear with me for a second. I got, uh, there we go, that's what I wanted, okay. One of the things I like to talk about is the difference between personal brand and career brand. And I briefly touched on that, and I just want to reemphasize it one more time before we get into the fun stuff. Uh, your personal brand is who you are. It is uh, what people think about you and say about you when you leave the room, right? It's, are you reliable? Are you funny? Do you, are you responsible? Those kinds of things. Uh, who are you as part of the community? Right now, your career brand basically sits on the shoulders of your personal brand. It's all that stuff about who you are, but also tied into a professional component, right? Um, your behaviors, your attitudes, your values, your online presence. How are you perceived in the workplace? Are you on time? Are you a hard worker? Are you a team player? Are you a motivated self-starter? Those kinds of things all sort of come into play. And and establishing those characteristics, those um, that persona is really, really important. And this is where tools like from Adobe can be really, really helpful. Now, if you want to and you get your phone handy, you can do a quick uh, uh, snap of that uh, QR code and that will take you to this presentation if you want to re review it later on. And we'll also share the link for it afterwards also. So a um, couple of things I wanted to point out here. You, you probably all know this face. Right, Kevin O'Leary, sometimes referred to as Mr. Wonderful uh, from Shark Tank. Um, and he had an interview with a gentleman, uh, Evan Carmichael, about uh, the college degrees that guarantee success. And uh, there are a few things that Kevin O'Leary said. I've left a link in here to the full interview. But one of the things that struck me was that little uh, quote up here. Storytelling is part of the attribute of the new digital 2.0 economy. Regardless of your major, regardless of your discipline, regardless of your career path, we all need to learn how to tell stories and tell them engagingly and effectively, whether they're about ourselves and a company we've created as an entrepreneur, or whether they are going to be the types of stories we tell about the company we work at and what we do there and what that company does. So storytelling has become 
far and above one of the most compelling uh, reasons and um, skill sets that is looked for um, inside of an in, inside of industry these days. So it, I definitely highly recommend you you um, uh, if you have a chance check out the interview. Um, it's he 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 says some rather enlightening things. Um, so very very important from that perspective. And then we get into this whole thing of digital literacy. This is a buzzword that you've probably heard somewhere, whether it's in a newscast or a documentary or someone in school. Um, what's referred to as digital literacy, digital fluency, digital agil agility. It's all sort of revolving around the same kind of concept. And that is, how good are we with these digital tools? How are they effective? How do they make my job easier, my life easier? How can they make my employer's uh, life easier? And being able to demonstrate that capability is, I think, becoming more and more critical from the standpoint of working with uh, digital tools and how you're perceived as a potential employee, especially if you're moving to work for a specific company. But also, if you're not, maybe you're going to strike out on your own and create your own company. Well, knowing how these tools work is going to benefit you because you'll be able to do a lot of the things you might normally have to farm out and um, in many cases pay for, which in the first year or two of a business may be challenging financially. So the more you can do on your own and do it effectively, engagingly, and professionally, uh, then the better off you are, uh, from in my perspective anyway. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole presentation. There's a lot of information here, but I want to show you one thing that I thought was really kind of interesting. Uh, and th it's this example right here. Um, this is a student from Indiana University. And when she got access to Adobe Express and Creative Cloud and Adobe Stock, uh, she a whole new world opened up for her. And we see here this example here. She's also a member of um, the uh, psychology club, I guess, for lack of a better term. And she was putting together flyers using maybe Microsoft Word or something like that to announce events. And you see that image right here on the left-hand side. And in fact, if I click on it, you'll see it a bit bigger. This is what she had. And while it gave all the information that was necessary, it's very difficult to understand where to look. It kind of looks like it was put together in, you know, Microsoft Word. It didn't have that polish, if you will. Now, once she realized she had access to Creative Cloud, to Adobe Express, she was able to take that those tools and the graphics that are available, the, the way she can create stuff, and make a much more professional-looking, engaging, easier to understand uh, flyer that gave the information that was needed, but did it in a much more professional manner. So that's just one example. And I'll show you one more here um, from a student who uh, had done an entire uh, presentation uh, using probably PowerPoint or Keynote or something along that line. And we see kind of the starting point here. This is the data. All right. Uh, this is a clip art image they found somewhere. Uh, and while it, it certainly shares the information that's needed, it's not very visually engaging. It's not as appealing. Pull in Creative Cloud, uh, access to uh, stock images through Adobe Express, and all of a sudden we take that same content and it we level it up uh, uh, several degrees into something that looks much more polished and much more professional. And that's the key here is that what we're trying to do is impact the brand, right? Impact your brand and do it in a manner that is not, you don't feel like you've got to open up uh, a 350 page PDF file to figure out where to get started. You know, I have lots of other examples here. I'll take a quick look at this one here um, from the standpoint of branding again. Here's a student, future nurse practitioner, and she has basically, by creating this web page, uh, showcased the kinds of things she's learned in her schooling. And these are not all specifically, they're all around healthcare, but they are also showcasing digital skills that are very hard to showcase in, say, a paper-based resume, for example. So there's links out to projects she's worked on. There's a way for her to sort of expand on her skill set and share what she's done, how she's done it, uh, and literally building up the credibility of her brand. And this was done using Adobe Express. She didn't have to code anything. She didn't have to know anything about CSS or HTML or JavaScript, anything like that. Very easy to use, and she can focus on telling her story and not focus on how does this software actually work. All right, I'm going to hop over here to one more quick example. I'm inside of Adobe Express right now, and one of the things that almost everybody needs in some shape, manner, or form, whether it's the traditional printed analog version or a digital version, 
is a business card. We're not all designers. We're not all graphically skilled in knowing how to put together a business card and the, maybe even how to place the elements on the card or what information should be included. Well, I'm logged into Adobe Express and I did a search for business card templates. These are templates I can freely use um, to kickstart my brand. And I found within seconds over 2,200 templates just for business cards alone. So I can go and scroll through these. I'm not going to um, go through too many of them here, but you can see there's a wide variety. I can even filter them based on different topics over here on the left hand side. And literally, I can build out a business card within minutes. I could grab this one, for example. Pull that up. And right off the bat, I can start doing things like, well, that doesn't look too much like me, so I'm going to go ahead and find a new image. I'm going to select that picture. And I'm going to choose. Go replace that image and I'm going to upload a photo. And I can go right in. I've got lots of photos of me because I do a lot of different events and things like that. And I can go right in here and pull up. Let's see here. Oh, let's go with. That's uh, there we go. That should do the job. And just open that up. And I'm going to automatically replace that image with my own, just like that. I can even, if I want to be a little more polished, I can utilize uh, some of the power from Adobe Photoshop right inside of here too by removing that white background behind me. I could just choose remove background, and Adobe Express is going to quickly analyze that background and pull it out. And now I've got that nice continuous background right in there. How long did that take me? Seconds. Right, and I can even fine tune that background removal process if I need to, if there's anything I want to clean up. But for, for my purposes for now, that's good enough. And then I can continue to uh, I'll just uh, commit to that. I can go in here, select the text, change the name just by clicking on it. Start adding in additional information, contact information, all those things. And then when I've got something I like, I've got the ability here to do a variety of things. I can download this as a graphic. I can download it as a JPEG. I can drop it into uh, other digital formats that way or presentations. I can download a PDF if I was thinking of printing it, or I can share it as a live link by clicking on the share icon and publishing this business card out. And then I can just provide people with a hyperlink that will take them to this as a finished document, all within seconds or minutes of, of the starting point. So. Huge time saver there working with Express from that perspective. Now, same thing again, that web page we were looking at earlier. Well, how do I even get started with something like that? Well, what I say about Adobe Express is that if you can click the, a plus sign, you can create something awesome within minutes. And there is the plus sign right there. If I click on that, you'll see uh, some of the most commonly done things, common projects, uh, logos, flyers, collages, Instagram posts, but a little lower down, web page. So I just tap on that and I get presented with this starting point um, and I'm prompted to do things. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type in my name. And I'm going to go to the subtitle and I'm just going to add in. Little humorous uh, subtitle there. OK, and now what I need is something punchy. I need something to grab my eye or grab my audience's eye because this gray background is not doing it for me. So I'm going to click on this little plus sign again right down here at the bottom of the screen and I can go ahead and add a photo and I can click on that and I can start searching through millions of professionally created images. So I don't even have to be a photographer to do this. I don't have to be an illustrator or an artist. I can find really good quality content. I'm going to type in here something like, oh, let's go with. Let's go with something simple like cameras, see what I get. And I get a range of different different images here. I kind of like this one right here. I can select that and automatically it gets added in. I can go ahead and drag whoops, my text around, maybe drop it over here. And already things are looking pretty professional. And then I just scroll down and I can start to add additional content, more photos, text, hyperlink buttons. I can even link to videos that I've created that are on YouTube or Vimeo. I can create a grid of images 
create a glide show, which is a sort of a layout tool where I can add big background images with content inside them, which is kind of nice and visually appealing. I can even go ahead and create a layout where one half is an image and one half is text and other content. And I can keep building that out really, really easily. Um, and just, you know, just kind of start off with this. I'm going to add in a heading. All right, um, there we go. I can change that up a little bit if I want to change the uh, change the look and feel of it, maybe make it a uh, lower heading or larger or even do something called a pull quote to make it a little more uh, visually interesting. It's really up to me. And when I get to the point where I'm happy with what I want, I'm maybe I feel I'm done. Uh, this one obviously isn't done, but just in the sake of time, uh, I can go up to the top here and you'll see an option to share this. So just tap on share, publish and share link. So there's my name already in there because that came from the title. Pick a category. I'm going to choose business. And I can turn on my author information here. You'll notice that the image that I found from Adobe Stock is featured here and have also been has been given photo credit already. I didn't have to go looking for that credit. It's already going to be applied to the project at the end of the actual project. So all I've got to do is click create link. And within a few seconds, that link is published as a live web page. There is the link right there. I can copy that. I can create a new browser window. I can paste that in and just hit the return key and it's live just like that. Now, the great thing about this is it's a persistent web link. So as I make changes, as I update this, as I add to my skill set or come up with an interesting story to share about how I've built my skills, uh, I can just publish those changes and everybody who's got access to that link still has access to the most current version of this story, this resume, this project. I don't have to worry about which PowerPoint deck I gave them or which PDF I sent them with my resume. It's always going to be current. And that's really, really, really hugely beneficial. OK. So. Uh, OK, I'll give you one qu other quick example here. Remember that um, that uh, screen image, that uh, cover image I had earlier when I started things out here? Well, this is was my iteration pro process. This was the template I started with. And you can sort of see how I worked through this, uh, adding in images, changing the subject matter, changing the background. Uh, and even changing the orientation. So I've got various different versions of this right down to one where if I click on this one, I actually turned it into uh, an animated version. So as I choose that animation again, there we go. So I can create some quick, simple animations in there as well. So it's not just have, don't have to just be static graphics. So there's a lot of things you can do inside of Express. And I've shown you a couple of different things from graphics creation, web page creation, uh, sharing this content out socially. I can just as easily work with this content on my phone. Uh, the beauty of Adobe Express is it's also here. There's a mobile app, so I can build this content out on my phone. I can start on my desktop and then move to my phone later on or the other way around. And I can share things out really easily to social media in the process. All right. And I think we'll we'll glaze by this one because I want to go into a few other things here. We talked about you know briefly some of the things you can do in Adobe Express. This is part of Creative Cloud. It's um it's a great way to get started with creating content, even if you don't feel you're a photographer or designer, or even if you don't feel you're super creative. I can tell you off the bat, everybody's creative. Just sometimes we need to find that way to, to get that information out. But um, when you get to the point where, say, you're, you've are you started doing a little bit of animation or video and you want to do more, uh, that's where the Creative Cloud tools, those desktop tools, really come into play. And I'm going to give you a quick example. We're going to hop over um, to, uh, actually, we're going to hop over to Rush, but I'm going to stop talking for a minute because I want Mark to share his experience uh, with his MBA project because that, that's pretty, pretty awesome. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I can find it. And you can probably grab. There we go. I will there. stop sharing. Awesome. There we go. Got it. And let me just share my screen. Let me know if this is coming through OK. Yep. Yeah, cool. Um, but before I get started, I'll just touch on something you said because I, I think I think you you nailed it when it comes to the the, the benefits and the relevance of Express. In that, um, 
it, it speaks to the democratization of our yeah. platform and our solution set, right? Anybody can use Express, whether you've got a high-end laptop desktop or a mobile device, right? A, a smartphone or, or a tablet. Um, I, I think where Creative Cloud really shines is, as I mentioned at the onset of the call, it is the industry standard professional grade solution set for uh, digital content creation and authoring. And, and of course, that is what you're likely to find when you go out into the workforce, right? So the, the if you think of the Fortune 500 companies out there, they're all Adobe customers. Um, and they, they may be Adobe customers, not only on the digital media side of things, but on the, the digital experience or experience platform side of things. Um, and that is a whole other area of our business where uh, once the content has been created, presumably using Express and Creative Cloud, uh, that focuses on, on how to manage, uh, distribute, publish content, uh, how to measure and analyze the effectiveness of your content, and ultimately how to monetize that content. And that can mean different things to different people. Um, in the case of, of a bank, right, and all the big banks in Canada are customers of ours, um, they might be looking at, at, at ways to reinvent and revolutionizing the customer experience so that uh, a customer doesn't need to do uh, all of their banking in a branch, a physical branch, as they would have in years past, but has a, an engaging and captivating experience, whether they're in a branch, whether they're on a mobile device, whether they're, they're at home uh, using a, a desktop or a laptop. Uh, and it all has to be uh, connected and synergistic. And so where I think Creative Cloud really shines is, is, is here. Um, and this is an example of something that I did during um, my EMBA a few years back where as a part of a final project for um, one of our courses, we had to pitch a business idea to a room of um, real world venture capitalists, much like what you see on Dragon's Den uh, or on Shark, Shark Tank in the US. And um, for me and my teammates, um, there, there weren't any of us on that or in that group who are developers or programmers or coders. Uh, and yet we understood that one of the best ways to effectively communicate our narrative uh, to our audience was to show them as best we could uh, in a tangible way what our vision was, right? So we we led by telling them what our, the, the, the business concept was. And then we said, here's a, a an example of a mobile app um, that we think will, will really help uh, ensure that the message resonates with you so you can better understand the concept of our, our proposed business. And what we did effectively is we, we basically created a mobile app prototype. So we showed a bunch of screens um, uh, capturing an image and capturing task-based activities uh, that a potential user would walk through as they use the app. Uh, and this, uh, in case you're wondering, is a product called Adobe XD, which is part of the Creative Cloud uh, Enterprise Platform. Uh, but again, it's a product that even lay people like myself could use, right? I'm not a programmer, I'm not a coder, but I was able to put this together in a, in a relatively short amount of time uh, to get my message across. Now, in the interest of full transparency, I didn't win, my team didn't win the, the competition. Not that that's relevant here, but uh, it was it was very much appreciated by uh, the audience that we were able to show them what what we were thinking because they it was it was a lot easier for them to to you know to to I guess wrap their heads around the concept uh, when we were able to just to to speak to it in this manner. Um, and so, Jim, that that's really all I wanted to show as it relates to my that's particular great. use case as it relates to to XD. Uh, th there's more that I could speak to. Obviously, dur during my studies, I, I leveraged solutions like Adobe InDesign for uh, print and page layout, digital publications. Uh, I leveraged um, products like Adobe Podcast um, uh, to, or, or Adobe Audition, I should say, which you know also now has has extended into Adobe Podcast as it relates to uh, to be able be able to build out podcasts. Um, and et cetera, et cetera. But um, I, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll give back control to you. Okay. Uh, so you can share um, some more examples of Creative Cloud and, and what, what we're seeing uh, across academia um, in, in, in the accounts that we work on. Yep. Thanks, Mark. That's a great example. Sure. All right. Okay. We're back in action here. Okay. So, um, XD is one of many uh, desktop-based tools that uh, is part of Creative Cloud. Uh, a couple other ones I want to share with you. You've probably all heard of Adobe Photoshop. We're going to take a look at that in just a minute. But also, an, I think, a really sort of game-changing tool from the standpoint of video, and that is um, Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, you're seeing it right now. It's a black screen, but 
again, talking about that concept of the side hustle, about the uh, ex about things like explainer videos, about documenting your work, or having another way to communicate um, your value or the importance of the research you may have been doing in a specific project or whatever it happens to be. Um, videos incredibly uh, popular. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys that. Uh, I I'm sure that if I asked for a show of hands and asked how many of you. Uh, look at TikTok or Instagram Reels, there'd probably be most of the hands up in the room. Video is huge uh, and it can also be used for a power of good, right? Not just for entertainment, but for ways to actually showcase and share content in different ways. And um, where we have Adobe Premiere Pro as our premium uh, sort of uh, industry standard uh, video editing tool that is used to cut major motion pictures on, for example, uh, we also have another tool called Adobe Premiere Rush, which I, I, I sort of reframe as video for the rest of us. I'm not Steven Spielberg, all right? I'm not um, going to be making the next uh, the next Oscar winning uh, film, but I do want to utilize video to tell stories. And this is just one quick example. I'm not going to run through the whole thing, but we'll just run through a little bit of this. And there we go. And I've incorporated my logo. So it's talking about branding. Incorporated my photo. To get a renewed photography show. Added in some live video. Maintaining the exhibition now. Near my cottage and features a collection of my photography from the surrounding. And then dropped in images as part of a slideshow. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing as as mesmerizing as it may be. Um, I just want to give you a sense of this is the kind of thing I can put together. I I built this entire thing from start to finish, probably in about you know, 48 hours. Not 48 solid hours but within a couple of days i started with nothing and i had built this out um and it's a great was a great promo piece for me to announce one of my upcoming exhibits so it's really phenomenally easy to work with if i go into back to my home pardon me my home screen here you can see i've got quite a few different projects but i can just start by choosing create a new project and i'm going to go into um just some sample media we've got here. And there's a few different clips here and maybe there's a sound file as well. And as I click on these guys, you'll notice in the near the bottom of the left of the screen, little thumbnails start showing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add these and you'll see the numbers one, two, three. Those are my three video clips. That's the order they're gonna be added into uh, the project. And I just click on create and they're automatically added to a timeline. There we go. Within a few seconds, I've got the starting point for my video. And this could be footage I shot on my cell phone. Obviously, this is just sample footage, but you get a sense of what's there. And then if I just scrub through this a little bit, I'm just going to show all my controls here. And so there's all the content, you know, everything from start to finish, each piece. And I probably don't want all of this, right? So if I start to play it back. Good morning, Philippines. So we're going to go to and I'm going to go ahead and just go right about there and I'm going to trim this just literally by dragging just like that and everything snaps back over to the beginning point and then I've already sort of clipped that video we're going to go to again. and then I've got this video footage of the boat now this is I just scrubbed through here it's pretty much the same thing it's the boat on the water going towards a beautiful tropical location I probably don't need you know, five or six seconds of this, I just need to, to set context. So again, I can go ahead and just trim this down to a smaller amount and continue on with that process. And I can continue that editing process of trimming those videos if I want to. But what I'd like to do here is just go and add in a nice little transition effect, right? So I'm gonna dissolve between these two, literally by clicking and dragging. And the same thing with this one. So now, um, not only do I have, am I, is it easy for me to edit these clips and trim them, but I can create professional looking transitions. Nice fade, another fade back out. So incredibly fast. And when I'm done that work, much like we saw with Adobe Express, there's a share button here. I can click on that share icon. I can download a new video, final video myself locally. If I have a YouTube account or Facebook or Instagram, I can actually turn those features on and in many cases, upload the footage directly to my YouTube channel at the same time. Pretty cool. All right, last thing, 
is Photoshop. Photoshop is the 100 pound, 800 pound gorilla when it comes to digital digital imaging and pixel pushing. Uh, and it is can be a bit of an intimidating tool if you've never used it before. Uh, but what we've tried to do over the years, and I've been really happy with how we've progressed this way as a, uh, as a former instructor, is that we've made it easier for you to do things, pretty complicated things, much more simply, right? So things like selecting elements. I used to teach my advertising students this. It was, was in the first couple of weeks of their course with me, how to select elements. And it was, you know, using the mouse and drawing around things, or maybe the magic wand. And if you've ever tried to select things with the mouse, uh, it's kind of like drawing with a brick. It's not the most fun, intuitive, accurate experience. Well, now we've got the ability here with new selection options like object selection, that's currently active here, and I can move in here and I can automatically select things like this barn just by moving my cursor over it. Click once and it actually selects that element, right? Or I can go ahead and select the sky or the foreground really, really quickly and easily. I'm gonna get rid of that selection because I wanna show you one other thing here. You notice the sky back here is fairly drab, right? It's kind of gray, it's overcast, it's not really exciting. Well, I can make quick changes to this image. Now, this is a good point to remember from two perspectives, making your life easier, but also understanding that things can be changed and manipulated really easily um, when you're, you know, so when you're looking at content, be critical. So I can just go to edit, sky replacement, and Photoshop's gonna analyze that image. And based on some stock images I have here, it's going to very, very quickly replace that background sky with something completely new, just like that. And I can go ahead and pick from different things here. I've got a rainbow, I've got some really dramatic skies. I can go with a nice blue sky, maybe something you know, with some clouds. And not only is it replacing the background, it's also blending that sky with the foreground elements. So things look fairly seamless. Pretty pretty amazing what can be done there. I'm going to cancel out of that for now. I'll show you one other thing here while we're here, and that is another image. Again, we can do that object selection. Uh, if you've ever had a look, something like this, you can do the same thing here. I could replace the sky very easily, but if I select that object selection here again one more time, and I move over to this forest area. This is actually the brickworks in the Don Valley. Uh, one of the paths down into the down into the brickworks. Look at how quickly Photoshop has allowed me to select all that foliage. But more importantly, look at what it didn't select. It did not select the fence. It did not select this random fence post over on the right hand side. It didn't even select, if you look really closely, the bridge right back in the background. All I'm grabbing is the foliage. Pretty awesome, right? If I had to try to make this selection manually, it would not have been a fun, fun time. It would have taken a lot of time and it wouldn't have been nearly as accurate. Now, if I take the same image, I can also do something else with it. I'm gonna go into my filters and talking about, again, making things easier and also the introduction of artificial intelligence into our tools. Neural filters is one of those areas where Photoshop is excelling in being able to um, utilize AI and machine learning to completely change the look and feel of an image. So I'm gonna turn on something called Landscape Mixer. And it's a, a beta product right now. It's a part of the neural filters. And I can go in here and decide, you know what? I think I want this to be more of a winter scene. And within a few seconds, uh, there's processing the, the image. And I've got turned my summer shot that was shot in August of what, three years ago now, I think two years ago, and turn it into a winter scene. Now I can play around with the strength of this because that's a little over the top and just sort of go midway through and maybe add some additional bunch of, uh, uh, visual here from the winter side of things. And I'm, I'm literally updating this image as I go, right? And uh, making some significant changes to it. So uh, whether it's winter, whether it's uh, an overcast, dramatic, uh, desert type day. Look at what's happened to the foliage here. Just by changing with one of these presets over here on the right hand side, I've changed the entire look and feel of the image. I can continue to customize this utilizing all the sliders that are down below. Maybe I like this, but maybe I want it to be more like, I don't know, nighttime. Well, there we go. There's dusk. 
We get closer, darker. There we go. And I can go really extreme there. So you can get uh, work around with different controls here to get a completely different result. And likewise, one last thing I'll show you here again with the neural filters is retouching. Retouching old photographs used to be somebody's job, <laughs> right? We had professional retouchers who would clean up and fix damaged photographs, black and white pictures from your mom or your grandparents' photo album. Well, I can scan this, which I did. This is a photo of me and my brother when we we're like, I don't know, eight uh, from the 1960s. You can see how it's faded. There's some creases in the photo from my mom's photo album. Well, I can go ahead and do the same thing here. I can go to filter, neural filters, and there is an option here called photo restoration. And I'll turn that on. And the first thing you'll notice, if you take a good look at the photo, watch the transformation in the color and the contrast. It'll take a couple seconds because it's analyzing the entire image. Look at that. I went from uh, that really faded kind of 1960s Polaroid kind of look to something that's a little richer. Um, and then I, while that's a bit better, I still have all these wrinkles and, 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 and uh, scratches in the photo. Well, you know what? I've got the ability here to use something called scratch reduction. And if I drag that slider towards the right, again, it'll process that, that um, the problems, it'll, what we call Adobe Sensei, that's our machine learning, is looking at the image, and it's going to analyze those problems, and within a few seconds, it's going to actually clean up. Uh, there, gone. All those creases we saw, gone, like that. I didn't have to, I barely had to do anything. And then I can go ahead and click OK, and I have a brand new version of this photo that looks way better uh, than the one that I had. And I'm going to say yes, I was happy with that. And I can just click OK, and I'm going to actually put this on a new layer. So I want to show you the quick difference here. So this is the new version. If I turn that off, there's the old one. I didn't even realize it was kind of green, right? Look at that. Huge difference. Took me took me minutes to do that kind of thing. OK, so we looked at a, a whole range of different things, hopefully giving you some ideas of what you can do to um, uh, you know, establish or maintain or enhance your current brand. Look at how some of these tools can make life easier for you, whether it's removing a background from an image, whether it's a headshot uh, where you've got a great looking expression, but the background's kind of busy and wonky. You can use Photoshop or Adobe Express to remove that background, drop it into a new background, make it your new uh, masthead for LinkedIn or for your digital resume. Lots of different options that are out there, building out your business cards just as easily. I'll stop because otherwise I can keep going. All right, Mark, I'll hand it back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, that was great. Um, never ceases to amaze me when I see you in action. It's really, really awesome. Um, I'm going to share something really quickly, Spiros, if that's okay, and then then we'll, we'll open the floor up to questions. But maybe two things. So one is um, I just want to emphasize that this this all – harkens back to what I said at the onset of the call, which is that these these solutions, this platform can enhance the student experience um, because there are many there are many tie-ins to um, your your studies in how you complement your your assignments and your work that you submit uh, for assessment. Uh, but they all ult ultimately uh, will help as you build out a portfolio and as Jim mentioned, build out your brand. Uh, to showcase your abilities and your competencies, competencies to a prospective employer. And so there's one document that I'm going to share really quickly, and I, I think I'll I'll put the link in the chat pod if that's okay. But it's it speaks to creativity and digital literacy across the STEM curriculum. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it should easily read STEAM as an acronym because uh, this applies to sciences, technology, engineering, arts, and maths equally. Um, and, and here's why, right? When, when we look at what what is most in demand uh, from uh, employers in terms of the skill set that they're looking mm. for in uh, in potential new hires? They're talking about things that that directly align to what we showed you today, right? The ability to to ideate, to problem solve, uh, to leverage technology, to um, to to use technology to design and, and program uh, experiences, um, and and here's how it might be relevant to each and every one of you based on your majors, right? There are examples of how these tools are used to support engineering projects, uh, examples on how these, these solutions can be used to support uh, health sciences through digital or scientific illustration, for example. Um, 
ways that, that they can be used uh, in medicine, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll, I'll share the, the link uh, in the chat pod. Uh, this is a great story as well that, that I, I recommend you, you um, have a read on. Uh, it's a, a student from the Philippines who won a, um, a scholarship to MIT a few years back uh, because she won a, a science competition, a global science competition, where the, the premise was to explain a scientific concept to the layperson, right? Somebody who does not have a scientific background. And of course, to tell her story, uh, and in her case, she, she focused on the theory of relativity, she leveraged our solutions to tell that story so that it could be easily digested and understood by someone who did not have a scientific background. Um, her story is fascinating. Um, I'll, I'll share the link, uh, Spiros, hey Mark, if that's okay. I'll, yes. I'll just point out one more side note to Hillary's sure. story is that she never really considered herself to be creative she thought she was she was a scientist she loved science and the creativity was a way for her to share that message and that passion uh to a much broader audience than uh than you know she might have anticipated prior to working with the tools yeah great point awesome spiros i don't, I don't know if, uh, if time will permit but if if there's anything else you want us to cover let us know if not we can op open it up to questions um and uh and, and answer accordingly yeah, no, this was uh, fantastic, and thank you both for uh, the presentations. Uh, it was very really enlightening for me as well, even though I have been using the tools for a while, and I'm a very avid advocate, Mark knows, that's why we even uh, did the whole partnership with Adobe, and now we're offering uh, our, our members the very discounted uh, access to Creative Cloud. And uh, as a reminder, if uh, anyone here hasn't purchased their account yet and doesn't have access from the university, uh, you can buy it uh, through the TMSU. But uh, yeah, if uh, folks have any questions they, uh, that they want to come forward with, uh, they can type them in the chat or uh, turn on their mics, or else uh, we could call the session to an end. And uh, again, thank you both so much. Of course, my pleasure. We, if we've got a minute, I want to share my screen for one more thing that I forgot to mention. So bear with me. Apologies. Feel free to ask questions, guys. Open, open your mics or whatever. But I wanted to show you I think this. Kelly's you asking have... a question in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. You guys She's might have typing. heard of this in the news. Um, bear with me. I just got to move some stuff out of the way. There we go. Uh, generative AI. You've all probably heard of Midjourney and Dolly. Well, um, Adobe's gotten involved in this as well with a, a new service uh, that's in beta right now called Adobe Firefly. This is our generative AI, and it's basically um, is offering two different generative models right now, text to image, which is like Dolly or Midjourney, but also something called text effects. But what's one of the other things that's really different about what's happening with Firefly is this is the first commercially safe version of generative AI that's out there, meaning that um, Firefly is not scraping the entire internet and essentially stealing other people's content to build new imagery. We are working with copyright free, public domain and Adobe stock content from our contributors, all of whom have basically signed off permission to do so. And anything that's as a result, anything that's created or um, inside of Firefly becomes commercially safe to use. You're not going to have to worry about, do I need to check and make sure no one's images were borrowed to make this image? Uh, I can utilize it in a flyer, in a commercial, in whatever I want, which is which is pretty amazing. I'm just going to go ahead and go into the text area because we all have a sense of what uh, image generation is all about. Um, and we can, well, it, Firefly does an awesome job. I want to show you something that the other services aren't doing. This is this text effects process. So I've gone ahead, I've typed in the word Toronto, and you can see I've got a, a, off the bat four different presets of how that word might be represented when I'm using the description of black and gold dripping paint. And we have a whole bunch of, again, samples here. Maybe there's one like, I don't know, flowers. Um, and you'll see in a few seconds, it'll it'll reiterate with that. Or I can go ahead and say, you know what? I want to do <coughs> maple syrup. Why not? Because we can, right? <laughs> and it'll take a second for it to iterate, but then I get oh, this really sweet, yummy version of Toronto. I can play around with different fonts um, and it'll re-render with those. And 
uh, create some really interesting results and even change sort of how that filling, filling, pardon them, filling in maple syrup, but how they how the texture is actually being applied to this. And I can change colors and so on. So it's really kind of a, uh, an amazing rabbit hole to, 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 to fall into. I, I can spend hours uh, inside of Firefly just making stuff. And if I go back quickly, one more step here, I'm just going to go to text to image, not to build something, but these are some of the things people have created. The Eiffel Tower in the middle of a desert with a river running through it. Um, cute little puppy dogs, right? <laughs> Everyone wants those. But what I'm really impressed with is the photographic realism. This black and white landscape of a mountain scene does not exist. This location is nowhere. This was generated through Firefly based on a, the tags, high contrast mountains, black and white, wide angle. And if I click on that, I'll see four versions of that, none of which are any mountain range that we have in existence at the moment, right? And very photographically realistic. This is the, the amazing thing I see. We're all used to seeing the fantastical stuff, you know, hobbits and funky cats wearing clothes, things along those lines. And they're great. I like them. Um, I played around with that too. People riding mo motorcycles on the moon. But one of the realistic commercial applications for generative AI is going to be the ability to create magical yet realistic imagery that we can use and repurpose. Look at this waterfall here, long exposure photograph. You know, that, that takes me 20 minutes to set up. If I'm doing this as a background, we're setting up a tripod, picking an angle, it's done, right? So this is the kind of thing and the kind of place we're going. Anyway, I'll stop. That's awesome. No, <laughs> thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Ke Kelly had a question really quickly, um, and I, I think I'll defer to you for this one, but what, what do you think are the most important visual aspects of a career brand? Um, a good headshot is one of the things that's really key. Um, and that can be something you've done a little bit of massaging work inside of Photoshop or or uh, Photoshop Express on your phone. But something that looks professional, looks authentic, looks genuine. It doesn't have to be a business portrait, you know, where you're all serious and stuff like that. You want to be who you are, right? You're portraying yourself. But a, a good quality headshot um, uh, that doesn't look like it was a selfie taken at arm's length. OK, well, try to avoid those if you can because there's a little bit of distortion always in those kinds of photos. So that's a really important component. Depending I, I would on, have to agree with that, yeah, Jim. Yeah, oh, sorry, Mark. just to add, I, I would agree with that because I think I think one thing that we can't lose sight of, especially with, with the, uh, the seeming predominance now of AI, is, is the human aspect, right? U ultimately, um, employers are looking to hire people. And the more authentic uh, that you 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 represent yourself, the more likely I think you are to get to get noticed because um, they they want they want to hire you. And in fact, something comes to mind. I, I had a dinner a few years ago with our CEO uh, in Toronto, and um, two uh, university presidents, um, George Brown College, I should say, George Brown College president and uh, OCAD University president, and three representatives. They were. Chief Digital Officers at uh, Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, CIBC, and uh, TELUS. And one of the questions that the two presidents, uh, EDU presidents asked was, what, what do you look for in our grads, right? What are the skills that stand out for you? And one of the responses was, was, was very interesting to me. It wasn't so much the grades, although you know, that, that's important um, to a certain extent. What really mattered though was their ability to collaborate effectively, to think critically, mm -hmm. yeah. to be creative, and to creatively problem solve. And those are all things that are very human in nature, things that you can't do with generative te or AI technology. Exactly. Um, or things that can be done, but to Jim's point earlier, th they will come across as not being authentic, uh, or it will be known that it was not something that that is, that is genuinely coming from an individual, but rather something that was created uh, through, through artificial intelligence. And I, Ultimately, there's no replacing the value that a, that a human brain brings right. to, the, to the equation. So I think, and then that's another aspect, I think, of these tools, which is amazing. It really engages people to create content. And, you know, what, what we're finding is that a lot of people, even though they have the ability to, to you know, go into chat GBT and say, create this image, or, or go into Adobe Firefly and say, create this image, they're opting to instead 
create their own, right? Be, their own images because it, it's coming from um, a uh, you know a, a, a authentic place and from one's uh, one's mind, right? Yep. Sorry, Jim. I think I could chew. No, that's fine. No. Say something. Um, uh, to your point, um, we see a lot of artists looking at Firefly as an iterative tool, so they can get a bunch of concepts out mm. quickly and then start refining them and turning them into their own final artwork from that from that perspective. Um, but as far as other visual elements, uh, Kelly, headshot, first of all, uh, some kind of video presence, like the, think of the the traditional ancient cover letter you used to have to send, and maybe you still do with a resume, uh, but think of it from a video perspective, right? Do a one minute video to introduce yourself to your prospective employer. That kind of thing can be really, uh, can say a lot about who you are as an individual. Uh, if you are going out on your own, then coming up with a, a some kind of logo and presence from that perspective, also really important. Maybe less so if you're looking to get work from, from someone else, um, you know, be a regular employee in, a, in, a, in, a, in another company. But those are the, definitely the headshot and maybe, the, and I think the video would be a close second. You better stop us, Spiro, so we'll keep going. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it's a pleasure and a privilege to have you both here to address all the questions. So, I mean, if we had all day, we would be here all day, but uh, Probably. I understand everyone's so busy. So if there's no other questions, um, we can wrap this up and uh, stop the recording and everything. And uh, everyone can go enjoy the, this beautiful weather that's outside here in Toronto. Yes. 21 degrees, Mark. I'm not sure how it's going to Oh, wow. Yeah, it's warm. It's warm. I, I actually haven't been out today, but it's warm. But I think, I think it'll be 21 tomorrow. It's it's crazy. So, so everyone, please go out, get some sunshine, and uh, yep. thank you so much, uh, both of you folks. Oh, you're welcome. You Thanks bet. everyone for joining. And best of luck to you all with your finals. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye now. Have a good day. Bye bye. You too. Bye now.